welcome to Tooth and Tail Talks, episode three. Uh, we're starting a little bit late today, so I'm going to get right into it and introduce the co-hosts, starting with the regular co-host we've got, Kipo and Satoros, if you guys want to say hello. What's up, everybody? How's it going? It's Kipo. Hey, and, Satoros, back again. And featured guest for this week, we've got the gentleman. Hi, everyone. What's up, Jen? All right. Glad starting... you could join us. Yeah. 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 Uh, I might not stay for for very long, but uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. Yeah. I mean, awesome. you're definitely a legend in the community, so definitely uh, great to have you here and get to hear some of your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're about how Toad's OP. <laughs> uh, so... yeah. All right. So let's start real quick with. Um... Actually, if we could start with the Pocketbot Cup for this last week, Storis, if you want to give your overview. Yeah, sure. I'm going to make this real short because we're running a little behind schedule. But um, there were actually uh, quite a few people playing in the PPCs this last Monday because it was a holiday, at least in the uh, in the U.S. So um, there were actually three. The Pacific PPC actually did happen. Uh, and uh, just to kind of go over real quick the a lot of the highlights, uh, Tatanka won every PBC, and he did not lose a single game. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, Tatanka is uh, the favorite in a lot of these matches, but even for him, that is very impressive, so props to him. Uh, uh, just to go over the standings real quick, in the Pacific, there weren't too many players, but Tatanka came in first, Meek came in second, which is no surprise, and Rush actually came in third. So that was very cool. Mm -hmm. In European, uh, we got okay, quite a few players. Uh, Tatanka did come in fr first, but Melvin Fro came with a st strong showing and came in second. And then uh, Goris, or Shornsleski, I always have trouble saying that name, but managed to come in third. Uh, and then in the American PBC, it was Tatanka number one, Heartseed number two, actually, and then Goris again for third. Uh, uh, one last shout out I want to say, uh, Heartseed played very well. Um, he played in the European and the American, obviously got second in the American. Uh, but in the European, he actually beat Lego Man 2-0 and took a game off of Melvin Fro. So very, uh, very impressive by him. And yeah, that about so wraps awesome. it up. Awesome. So congrats, uh, Heartseed, for the shout out. And Tatanka taking first in all of those, beating the likes yeah. of Melvin Fro and Meek. Without That's dropping a, a map. A Grand Slam, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. It's right. like a Grand Slam. Uh, I mean... Pretty cool, right? I didn't know that he didn't... He didn't lose a single game in three tournaments? Correct. That's insane. That That is that is absolutely... Like... Man. Yeah, I mean, he played something like eight series or something. Did, did he do the same build each time? I, I I don't think so. Uh, okay. But he, he played a lot of his standard stuff that he likes. It's not like he was like playing random or something. I bet there was is a lot of still at, is, he, is, he, is he still at 1,500 points in the ladder? Uh, 14. 14, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. still pretty impressive. It must be like, what, uh, one or 200 points to be above the next uh, best ranked player, right? Yeah, uh, I, I I will get into that because it is pretty crazy what happened this morning on ladder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, that's a perfect segue uh, if you want to move right yeah. into that, Kiko. Absolutely. So, so uh, Tonka's been playing a lot lately. Um, he's currently number one and number two on ladder. And I'm going to th I'm gonna throw this at you. So this week, Tonka played on ladder, right? Uh, he... he won 51 games this week and he lost 16 like just let that sink in 51 and 16 i mean it's just so dominating you know he's ranked number one and number two little tatanka got i think on camel got all the way up to rank seven in the world and he's slowly climbing i mean he's path legendary status here i mean he's on top of every tournament he's on top of the ladder he's barely ever losing it's just pure domination i mean it's almost like even almost surpassing heirloom when he was in his prime 
So it, we're living in a Tatanka world, guys. I have a question from someone who has not been following the ladder activity recently. Uh, is little Tatanka Tatanka's little brother, or is he just is it just uh, Tatanka Smurf? It, it's Tatanka Smurf. It, it, oh, yes, okay. yes to both. It was made for Tatanka's little brother in the two v twos, but he uses it as a Smurf. So, so yes, okay. actually to both. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in weekly, we have in second place uh, Meek and in third place Satoros, and we have the most played games the players who played the more games than anybody else this week it was meek back on top this is where he usually sits uh playing more games than any other player followed closely by trumpet and then tatanka in third um but yeah i mean this is this is getting pretty crazy with tatanka just absolutely dominating in in every form this game Gent, have you uh, have you run into Tonka recently with some of his new strategies and builds? No, no, I must say that I haven't played uh, Two Sun Tail since uh, like three months, or uh, basically since the last championship ended. But uh, uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty curious. Uh, I keep hearing about Tonka, and uh, I was telling to myself that I should definitely come back to Ladder to, to play him because I'm pretty sure uh, I would need to to learn uh, what he's doing because. Uh, if you if you can get to like fourteen hundred points in ladder, it means that you you found out um, some pretty dominating way to play the game. So I'd be really curious to to try to to uh, challenge that. Somebody needs to take to this boy it. down. I would love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he definitely has a play style. Like, um, it's not like he plays everything, right? He's definitely. Uh, somewhat tier three centric um he i think he i think all of his serious builds bring uh some sort of tier three whether it's just a boar or <laughs> his recent favorite uh wolf and owl uh, but pretty much always he has that tier three as just a really big you know high tech unit threat um, but then he just plays you know super solid you know tier two to supplement and again his his mid and late game, both strategy and tactics are just very, very good. Um, so that makes him very difficult to beat. To dig into his approach a little bit, um, a, a lot of his decks are with a base tier one, tier two army, and then he kind of tacks on two deck slots from there. So Squirrel, Toad, Skunk, Snake and then just yeah. whatever else whether it's boar falcon or wolf owl or you know whatever else he wants to tack onto that that's his base army so he's one of the players that actually does not use structures that much at all it's a very meaty army uh kind of an approach is what i've seen yeah yeah i i think it makes sense uh not relying on structure is definitely more uh, reliable overall if you want to to come up with a, a deck that sounds um um, a very good utility uh, in all kinds of situations because structures are always going to be map dependent so you are going to, to win even harder when you have them on the right map but it's going to be a, a bit of a dead weight on some other maps some uh, or more open maps so yeah it doesn't surprise me that uh, the most competitive decks will not use structures in it makes sense to me yeah, he, he relies heavily on Toad and uh, Snake. The, the Toads will, will, you know, try to clear up the ground forces in the Tier 1. And the Snake, his, his Snake Micro is relentless. He's very offensive with his Snake Micro. He'll just try to tag every single Tier 2. Two tags, two tags, two tags, two tags. And, and just, he'll, he'll clean out the Tier 2 from your army. And, you know, he has a, a late game that it can rival that of, you know, the, some of the greats like Melvin Fro. But he's, he's even more aggressive than Melvin Fro. He'll, um, he'll attack in the early and the mid game. And, and I mean, I, I played like six or seven games with him today. And barely any, any of those games he got at a single tier three. He's just, he's so good at, at defending. Uh, but he'll he'll also throw in some aggression if you're you know you build two tier two warrants too early. He'll he'll punish that with the timing. Your unit composition's a little off. Maybe you have too many lizards. He'll punish that. Um, so he, he definitely very active at all points in the game, and and he's always a threat. 
but yeah. not in the same way as someone like Meek. Uh, Meek is on another one of the top five at easy, one of the best players in the world right now, um, but he's a bit more of a wild card. Meek is famous for his four front doubles. He's famous for his um, just hitting you with all kinds of different early aggressive strategies. So when Kipa, when you say that he Tatanka can be aggressive, you don't mean the same way as Meek, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it, they're sort of their 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 styles are almost polar opposite. Like, like Tatanka is like, I'm just going to play the most consistent best deck over and over and over again with the best uh, strategy, which is a defensive oriented strategy, unless I see an opening, and I'm going to grind you out. And Meek is sort of like all over the place, you know, like you got that cool ice of Tatanka yeah. and then the fire of Meek. Where it's just like you—you you don't know what he's gonna hit you with. It could be any build. It could be any strategy. It could be ruthlessly aggressive, ruthlessly eco. Um, so, it, it's very cool that two of the top players in the game have pretty much opposite styles. Yeah, Mick is definitely a, a, a trickster type kind of player, while um, Tatanka seems to be belonging to the other kind of of top player. That is the kind of that plays very robust and uh, even when they are aggressive they don't commit to to it so even if you defend yeah, they didn't uh, do anything all in and they can fall back to their uh, late game plan so yeah 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 definitely i mean uh, to your point meek will try a strategy that if it doesn't work he just loses but it's it's Im almost impossible to predict you have to constantly be scouting not only his base but every mill on the map <laughs> in case he tries to hide yeah. something and you're always on your toes but again if you manage to figure out what meek is up to and you defend it properly you basically win again it's the very all-in strategies usually but again with tatanka like again he he plays a very defensive game but but he's not afraid to attack. Like if he thinks he yeah. has a better army than you and you're being greedy, yeah. he will attack you. It's not like um, that, but he's just very solid, right? He doesn't yeah. go for super all in sort of uh, attacks or strategies. Yeah, just that's, to how, control yeah. The yeah. Game. that's how you should play to, to win in general. You should uh, try to react to what your opponent is doing. Uh, but Mick is, um, is more fun because he's not going to necessarily react. He's going to try to create stuff. And he's going to try to dictate uh, how the game is going to be played with uh, creative uh, strategies. But uh, I think, yes, uh, uh, the win rate is going to be a little bit more competitive if you, if you play um, uh, in a more reactive way. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, Kipo, is that all you've got for a ladder watch there? I do. And, you know, if you want to jump over to my highlight, it actually is of uh, the King of the Hill tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Tonka versus Melvin Fro, where we could sort of see Tonka's, uh, you know, deck and play. Yeah. All right. I'll pull that up right here. Oh, not like that. Uh, gents, I don't know. This is the new uh, the new meta that Tonka has brought to Tooth and Tail. You'll be able to see it. And yeah. Uh, just how effective it is it does like sat mentioned earlier involve the wolf and the owl which just seems to just own the late game yeah I'm yeah I'm, I'm, I'm curious because i really don't know about uh, wolf all uh I, I knew tatanka um used to run the board deck you described to me earlier but yeah. i didn't know he was doing uh, all walls at one uh back in the day uh, i think only cheap from space uh, used to, to to do that combo uh, at the highest level, and did, and I always regarded that as a bit of uh, like not a meme, but um, uh, not that competitive. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here on the screen, I uh, hope you guys can see that. I'm gonna go about 20 seconds earlier um, than you marked, Kipo, just to get into it. This is what the Tonka's eco is. Uh, I just want to say real quick because. Uh, the scoreboard on the bottom right is hidden right here. Tatank is up 1 0 to Melvin right now. Superior. Okay. And now Absolutely. He has the so, out so, if too. you actually just put this Toad. in a nutshell and you look at their armies before this engage happens, they're really not that different. Melvin Fro is sort of on the back foot because he's a little behind the Nico. So, no matter what, in this game, he has to attack and he has to attack right now. And what we're going to see is a, a nice army split 
out of Tatanka. You see he's got his snakes on the high ground. But watch the toad connections. I mean, they go right through the water and they delete so much. And he's got his army so well spread out, his you know, his snakes on top, his skunks on bottom, and he pretty much wins the game off of this defensive play yeah. right here. Uh, but the toads, I mean, it was six toads, and they killed uh, seven squirrels, just straight up. Or, or excuse me, eight, seven or eight squirrels, and then they brought all the tier two to pretty much half health. And they just went right through the water, and it was just very well played. Um, and you could really see also just the power of Toad as well. Yeah, uh, it reminds me a bit of uh, Tiki Gray in the sense that he, he, there is just not a lot of player who was such a, a great um, terrain awareness in the way they, they utilize uh, like a um, uh, circle to army split and and in this case, the the water, because you don't expect to be attacked through the water, but Toads can actually uh, go through water without losing any speed. So it, it's pretty... Uh, yeah, I think only Tiki Gray would have pulled uh, a defense uh, uh, like this, probably. And it also goes to show you the importance of splitting. Like if Melvin Fro yeah. just had his, his squirrels in the back, his snakes in the middle, and maybe his skunks off to the side, the, the toad connections wouldn't have been as devastating. Yeah, toads are, are pretty much uh, hit or miss depending on how your uh, your uh, engagement goes. If you have a better micro management than your opponents, and Larry just uh, was a, a full strike. One could say that when it's Tatanka, the toads are hit or hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kipo, uh, in connection with that, that was from your King of the Hill. If you could kind of give us an update or an overview on how King of the Hill is going. Yes, this will just take two seconds. I know we're running a bit behind. Just giving a shout out. We had our first episode. It was a success. We had Pyro and Cactus claiming hills as well as Tatanka 3 owing Melvin Fro. And once again, he did use wow. that same deck in every single game. Squirrel, Toad, Skunk, Snake wolf owl and so now they're on top so pyro cactus and tatanka will be facing new challengers uh, and we also have a fourth hill that just opened up tatanka will be taking on night slayer uh and you have that coming up here in a couple of hours yeah it'll be pretty much when this wraps up around six o'clock if it gets pushed back it gets pushed back cool so make sure you guys tune into that. King of the Hill is just getting started, and it's looking like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if we could hop over to the 21 duels here, because I want to make sure Jen is here for that. Um, and I just want to say real quick, I believe all of the games are open to being scheduled um, as of yesterday or something like that. Or uh, Jen, you remember exactly what dates was? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you mean... Uh... Uh, the schedule for the 21 duels, you know, you, you can only start scheduling them um, uh, from the 18th of June, so like two weeks from now. Oh, okay. It hasn't started yet. Signups are, are still open. Okay. And they right. will, they also will stay open um, for a few weeks after the start of the season, but it hasn't started yet. Okay. Yeah, I got that mixed up my bit. So signups have been open and remain yeah. open, and the games themselves will start. And I am the first boss, um, so everybody has to get through me. Yeah. Probably won't be that hard, but I'll do my best. Oh, I think uh, it's a pretty tough event because, uh, like, if you are a new player, you already have to to play uh, like uh, an intermediate level player. So, not not everyone can uh, can go very far in, in this uh, in this event because even the the first boss. Uh, which is supposed to be the uh, easiest one, but uh, it is very, uh, is very uh, like uh, uh, strong if you go for uh, from um, all player base perspective. Gotcha, makes sense. Well, thank yeah. you. I'll do my best to knock everyone down. A peg yeah. or two. I think we'll yeah. see some good yeah. games. So I, I want to go through and kind of overview these boss rule sets actually because i think that'd be interesting for people to get some of our perspectives on those 
So if we'll just start with mine, I've got this pulled up, uh, the website here, which by the way, I, I, you've heard it a lot, but a lovely website, looks so good. Oh yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, very functional as well. Um, so stage one, that's that's me here. Um, also, I, I like, I just want to say real quick, if you look at the flag, everybody's from a different country and I love that. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, 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 uh, because um, I have a database and I put down the, uh, the country you're from and then you just, uh, Pull off the flags uh, on the on the web page. Awesome. So the rules for the first boss one, uh, fights here uh, is extra large map, scarce mills, no campfires, regular deck size, uh, and then banned three units: lizards and foxes because they're fast, and wolves because they make other units fast. Yeah. Uh, and then between game one and game two, you can't reuse units except squirrels. Um, so think like skunks and snakes. Pick game one or game two um not to use them both times so um if we could just run down the line starting with uh gent what was your kind of thought with this one and then keep in stores how do you think this is going to turn out um i ended up uh, playtesting a lot of uh, different settings and uh, i noticed that on extra large map with the scarce meal and no campfire the map generation is going to almost always give boss player exactly one expansion, one natural expansion, and just uh, that one expansion. So um, I thought it was uh, a pretty interesting way to, to approach the game with uh, longer rush distances, uh, no swift units to abuse the uh, larger map, and uh, a very fixed uh, amount of meal. So you know it's going to be a two-base game, so you have to plan around that. It's not going to be a super long game. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much a challenge to to uh, try to come up with the best deck and build on this kind of settings. Uh, and then if you win the first game, Tando, it goes to a, a second game. And then it goes a little bit uh, crazy, crazy because you cannot reuse the units you, you use except from four scrolls. And just to clarify, if the challenger wins the first game, they immediately move on. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So so I can actually put more weight on the first game, because if I lose, I don't have to worry about the second game. Yeah. Uh, Kipo, what are your thoughts here? Kind of first impressions. Uh, so on this first matchup or the tournament? Uh, on the rule set here for this match. I honestly I like it. I think this is going to be a ton of fun, and and I can't wait to watch some of these games. Um, w you know, when we think of tooth, uh, tooth and Tail, we don't think of uh, all these different uh, possibilities, and the games are some of the most interesting uh, things that you could see. So I can't wait. I think it's going to be great. Uh, Satoros, yeah. what do you think specifically of this rule set here? <sighs> I mean, I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> just looking at this it's gonna be really interesting because obviously it's a big map but you don't have swift units but also there's scarce mills so again not supposedly a long game but again it's a long rush distance so attacking is going to be a little harder so there's a couple of competing things going on i think yeah it's definitely definitely going to be interesting what people come up with here do you think I, again, you... I have some ideas, but I'm not going to go too deep on it. Sure. Yeah, do, yeah. Do <laughs> he doesn't think... want to, to reveal his strategy before you with Tandor. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> do you guys think that moles are going to be viable, if you could say that much? Since that's about the only way you can get units to your opponent's base almost instantly? And the, uh, the counterattack is harder to do? Well, the patch should be in place before this tournament starts, theoretically. So, yeah. yes, I think moles will be usable. <laughs> And this is a perfect map for it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, not only is it a really big map, but there's not that many mills, so it's not like you can take territory wherever you want. So the, the flex building of moles is going to be really good. Yeah, makes sense. Well, let's move on then. Uh, stage two here. Leon. Um, just want to say real quick, I guess, slight self-shout-out, but more to Leon. Leon and I were the finalists in the championship for beginners, and he won. And he's, uh, I think he's significantly better than I am now. He's been a lot, uh, practicing a lot more, so a very fitting second boss, I think, uh, representing England. So the special rules here, camps, plentiful, so back to normal size uh, map, but plenty of camps, 
deck size three, and then the deck selection deck selection is uh, you kind of draft ahead of time, so you both know what the other one has. And uh, Jen, if you could just clarify pick order here, does that mean one player picks yeah. one unit, then the other player picks the next two? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. So picking one unit, then two units for the other player, then player one picks two units. Um, and player two picks uh, the last unit. Yes. So then the picked units cannot be chosen by their opponent. So I suspect we're going to see somebody pick Lizard or Squirrel right away, and then yeah, yeah. somebody pick the one of the others. Um, yeah. And then game two, same as the previous one, no, no units from game one, uh, which is going to get really crazy because if you think Squirrels and Lizards are the only stable tier one that you want as a, as a staple, uh, you're going to have games that can't have those. Yeah. So well, what was the thought process here uh, for this one, Jen? Uh, I wanted to have a, a stage with a, a draft. Initially, we had uh, uh, only uh, two units per deck. But after some testing, we thought it might be more fun with th three units. Uh, we did not really test the uh, configuration for, for a possible game two. So I think it's going to be pretty dicey if it comes to, to game two because uh, we might have some very imbalanced um, uh, matchups, but it's part of the of the games. Uh, the draft is uh, is also a part of the game because you you can plan around it, and try to to leave first pick for the first game to try to get it back on game two. Or, well, there are all, all kind of strategies you, you can you can try for for the draft, but we had great fun uh, in any case for the the. Uh, th three size deck uh, draft thing so I think it's it's going to be pretty cool um, Le Leon is a, is a pretty strong player like, like you said but because it's uh, going to be different units uh, on every game he is not going to have a, like a, a boss advantage from being overly familiar with uh, the deck units like some boss might be in some other stages so yeah right but so at the same gonna... time he, he might become more experienced with uh, the drafting mechanics and tactics over time i don't know it it's, it's going to be interesting so it, for leon it could be a different game each time depending on how they go yeah so uh kipo and sataros what are you guys thinking of this one hey uh i'm scared entering this tournament because i have to go up against leon in the second match yeah <laughs> that's that's heavy. I mean, Leon is a really good player. Uh, he was beating me on ladder earlier handedly, so I, I think it's going to be a challenge. And um, I just can't wait to see how this all shakes out. Like, like our tier three is not viable if you only have three units. It almost seems that way. I guess defenses are, are going to be kind of off the table. Um, there's so many mind games that can be played, so I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, this is... I think this is my favorite rule set. I'm a sucker for draft of if, of basically anything because I, I think it adds another layer of strategy. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited about this. I like how camp camps are plentiful. The the camps are cabins, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, I I like that because okay, it's it is a normal size map, but at least if there's a bunch of uh, camps in the way, that makes it so like four farm double lizard for example is going to be a little less viable if again there's a bunch of camps in the way so if there's some tier one imbalance that hopefully will uh, you know balance it out a little bit um but again i think there's there's definitely a lot that can happen here and what you pick d can't just be good in a vacuum it definitely has to be good against what your opponent picks when you only have three deck slots so i think it'll be interesting Awesome. Okay, moving right on to stage three here. Um, Shenshe, coming from, forgive me, what is the country uh, for this flag? Poland. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, decks must be composed, picking exactly one unit from each of the following five categories. This might be one of my favorite rule sets because it's cool. Um, so, deck size five, and you just pick one of each. Otherwise, there are no restrictions whatsoever. Um, we've got light mammals, we got heavy mammals, we got reptiles, and you're going to hear a lot of complaints about toads being stuck into reptiles, but... Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then birds, obviously balloons are up with birds as well to balance it out, and the other defenses, so... Um, any specific thoughts here, Jet? 
Um, I, um, not, not really. Uh, it came up uh, pretty late in the playtesting, so I think it's a, a pretty elaborate uh, uh, set of rules and a pretty fun one it should be. Uh, if there is a game two, uh, there is no additional rules, so you can very much take the same deck if you want, but uh, you could also make some adjustments from what your opponent took. So I'm pretty curious about that one. There is a lot of freedom uh, in deck selection, but also uh, some uh, restriction, I, I guess. Cool. Keep us first. Any, anything you want to point out specifically here? Yeah, this will be fun. I, 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 I think this is, a, again, a, for, a fun way of restricting uh, deck selection. I, I think it'll just lead to some interesting decks. I will point out that Wolf and Owl are in separate categories, so you know, oh, yeah. somebody, somebody's going to try that. <laughs> yep, so the first thing I noticed was the same exact thing. Wolf, oh, Owl, really? Barbed Wire. Uh, Wolf, Owl, Barbed Wire, Squirrel Toad, like, or Squirrel Snake. You're good. Oh, it's man. like almost a deck I would, would use on the ladder. <laughs> wow. Well, I was going to ask, yeah. what do you think a sample deck could be out of this? But it looks like Squirrel, Wolf, toad or something owl barbed wire yeah yeah that'd uh, be missing skunks but yeah that's pretty close i could see ferret balloon turret as well um those that combo is available also note the tier one units are pretty spread out like you can still use squizzard or squirrel toad or squirrel pigeon so kind of convenient how that worked out i think yeah all right stage four here so this is lego man from germany and this is going to be thing out here. Uh, fewer people are going to be making it this far, but hopefully we can uh, encourage you all with some of the cool stuff and, and everyone tries as hard as they can to get up this high. So deck size three, again, um, rolling random and mandatory mirror, so you know what your opponent has. Uh, the boss will roll and note three different rolls, and the challenger will pick one of them. So it's you roll three times and the challenger picks which one he prefers seems pretty self-explanatory what do you think guys um so it's pretty much a, a variation from Toshi's uh stage five from last season um i i wanted to reduce to to deck size three because um wh what we noticed last time is that when the deck size is too too high there is um, a good chances that there is going to be enough units for a um, or like a standard core deck, uh, if you know what I mean. So uh, things are, are not very crazy if the random decks are, uh, are like uh, size 8 or size 9, because you're bound to have uh, a lot of reliable units that you might normally see in, uh, in uh, normal games. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, we are leaving a little bit of choices for uh, for the challenger too, so they're not stuck with. Uh, uh, or I guess they, they could just try to, to choose which uh, which kind of crazy game they, they want to, to play. Uh, I, I might want to add that you cannot choose a, a combination that does not involve any way to kill enemy meals. Like if you only have defenses or pigeons, you cannot pick uh, those decks. So yeah, Lego Man is a pretty strong player in my opinion. Tensech uh, did go further than Lego Man and this guy as a challenger in spring, but I I thought that uh, Lego Man has uh, had a, a better form than Tensech uh, in general in a normal game at least. Uh, that being said, uh, stage three is not necessarily going to be easier because. Uh, Thensage is going to have a lot of time to practice uh, his specific set of restriction, while Legoman is going to have the same problem that Tosh had last game, and that is that he has no way to uh, build up experiences for his stage because the decks are going to be different each time. Yeah. So yeah, and, and last season, if you remember, if you remember, Tosh had, had a little bit of. Uh, of um, trouble ma maintaining a, a good win rate because uh, of that uh, specific uh, random uh, thing that uh, was a bit of an advantage for the challengers. And uh, Legoman can't even count on 
statistical evenness because his challengers might all like you know if one of the three rolls has squirrels his challengers might always pick it or might never pick it and he doesn't know so it's like yeah. even worse than random almost for him and as i might try to abuse uh, his weak points like uh, like he maybe they, they are not going to pick uh, any decks with snakes in it <laughs> yes that makes sense um, so maybe a phantom rule that's not listed here would be you have to have at least one unit that is not mines, wire, yeah. turrets, arty, balloon, yeah, yeah. pigeon, wolf. Yeah, uh, I'll specify that uh, when the tournament starts. Cool. All right. Any any notes, Kipo Satoros? I think this is the part of the tournament where the difficulty gets kicked up into an 11. And uh, I... I think if you get to this guy, you deserve a medal because this is going to be insanely difficult with all these players, especially Lego Man, who's just, he's been around for so long and it seems like every tournament he, he's in, he just goes so far. So I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, so this stage is the one that will challenge the players of their understanding of how units interact with each other. Uh, you know, they're are going to be times where a random deck is picked and you really should only build one of the units <laughs> and <laughs> it's just going to happen right um but again you have to be able to see that random deck and immediately or very quickly determine okay well this unit versus this unit is going to have this result or if i combine these two units maybe it'll be okay or like where are going to be the strengths and weaknesses uh of each of the units of the deck against each other um, and yeah, it's definitely going to challenge your game knowledge. Makes sense. I like thinking of it that way. All right, stage five, getting a lot deeper here. This guy, and again, what is the flag of this country? I'm not super well versed. Lithuania. Lithuania. Okay. All right, and he has uh, the challenger picks which deck uh, for the first game, and then the second game it's the other one. So, if there is a second game, uh, deck size four, just one of these. We've either got all of the birds or swap out uh, owl for a fox and the balloon for a mine um so gent why these decks what made you pick these um, um so the, the first deck is a uh, all bird uh, i think it was an id from themsearch or was it lego man i think it was themsearch that suggested it and the, it's it's actually fairly cool because if you think about it uh falcons are, are the way to go but uh, at the same time, the balloons are pretty much effective against Falcons. Uh, but you can go with Alls to deal with Balloon and get a little bit of uh, tanking for the Falcons if you have the time. So there is a little bit of rock, paper, scissors with this deck. And the second deck um, follows a bit of the same rule. Like uh, you will want to, to, to play Falcons, but whoever can sneak a fox is going to have obviously an insane advantage because Fox can, with proper micro, can kill uh, all the falcons without without getting shot. But again, there is also the mines. So if you're not careful with the fox, if you don't um, clear out the mine first with falcons, then your fox is going to maybe step on it since since it's the only ground unit uh, and die. So so yeah. I think it's going to be an extremely hard stage because um, there is no trickery with um, deck selection tactics. It's all going to come down to unit control, and this guy is, uh, is very, very good at uh, with with uh, unit control. Um, initially, I didn't think like when I invited the bosses that I would um, get this guy um, higher than Lego Maran or than such because he he, um, he has not played competitively uh, for, um, like if, if you've been in, uh, in the two Sentai community for more than two years you would know that this guy had a period where he was one of the very best uh, two Sentai player like he used to run uh, little bits of the same deck uh, every game like uh, with uh, skanks and squirrels but he would be extremely extremely good with it because of uh, how insane his unit control is. But after some time, he got bored and 
he decided that he would only run meme deck for every game and uh, he kind of fell under the radar in terms of competitiveness. But then we started doing the, the playtesting and I was just blown away by how strong this guy was. He was always um, like instantly figuring out how to play uh, a new set of rules and always being one step ahead uh, in terms of how to play the matchup and how to 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 use uh, his unit control. And uh, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to, to put him into stage five and, uh, and this is going to be a, a, a very, very difficult wall. Another steep increase in the difficulty curve. Uh, I just want to shout out to this guy as well. Um, he isn't. He's in the two v two tournament, and he just barely didn't make it into the playoffs uh, with Kaiser's. But it was a very, very close match. Um, in the, I believe that was the upper division. So, very strong player there as well. Yeah, I mean, if you if you camel this guy, you'll see he used to be number one. Like he was the number one player on camel for a good period of time. Uh, and he's insanely good at this game, especially with his micro and everything. So, I mean, if I'm in this tournament, honestly, I'm going to try and basically play all my games and all the bosses as fast as I can. Because if you're coming up against this guy and he's played this these decks against like six or seven other people, <laughs> it's just going to be that much harder. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, definitely echo that. And... Uh, the only thing I'll say is uh, I definitely I started to play when this guy wa wasn't you know being super hardcore and everything. I would just play him casual games, but man, yeah, his his unit control is no joke. I just I just remember like seeing him beat boars with squirrels and just do ridiculous things with tier one especially. He's uh, he's definitely very good with the control, so it'll be fun to see. All right, final stage here. Tatanka from, I believe that is Sweden. Yeah. Uh, must be beaten twice. Uh, mills plentiful, camps plentiful, lots of money. Deck size five. Um, and then for the first game, birds and defenses are banned. And then... Until, yeah, until Tatanka loses his first slide. Yes, okay. So that could be several games of these settings. Gotcha, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so until Tatanka loses a game... These are banned. And then, for the, the game after that, Pigeons and Snakes and 3, uh, anything. Yeah. So is the uh, bird ban here just to kind of even out with all of the bird focus decks we have earlier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so deck size 5 as well. What was the uh, rationale on that? Uh, since it's uh, the final stage... Uh... I wanted to stick uh, close to the formula of what was the last final stage in spring. So last final stage we had Mick, uh, which was considered the best player at the time since he had just won the premier champion championship. Uh, but at the same time, to make things, uh, the rules are, are um, not that crazy because uh, you, you, you still can can make a, a decent uh, uh, competitive looking deck out of these rules so I wanted to to yeah to have the same uh, difficulty and competitiveness for uh, Tatanka's final stage I'm uh, I wanted to, yeah sorry I, I wanted also to be to have it, it uh, more aggressive um, uh, at least for the first games, because uh, as you will see for the next stage, the extra stage with Arilu, uh, there will be a lot of defenses. Makes sense. I'm interested to see how many people actually get to that uh, second life yeah. of Tatanka. <laughs> I mean, we've got it's all of these to crazy bosses to get so through. Hard. So I, I want to see some, some really strong uh, snake pigeon poking, but... Uh... I don't know, guys. What do you think? How many how many people are gonna make it this far? I think very few, and I and I don't think anyone's gonna make it to Erlu because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be tough. Yeah. If uh, yeah. if nobody makes it to Erlu, 
is it worth sending Erlu through as a challenger as well, or does he just kind of sit out and wait? <laughs> Jen. Oh, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the rules say that uh, he gets 200 points if no one gets to him. But uh, yeah, technically, uh, yeah, it would be a sum, but it would be a bit um, tricky uh, because of how I I coded things into the website. So oh, yeah, fair yeah, enough. maybe maybe not. Yeah. Um, so, I do think I do think this will be interesting. Uh, the boar is still available, <laughs> so I think we'll definitely see that from uh, Tatanka since he can't get his wolf owl. But we'll see. I think there's still some interesting combinations. Um, also, I do unfortunately have to go. So, uh, Gent, it was great to have you. Great to talk with you. Get some of your insights. And uh, thanks, Tandor and Kepo, for uh, hanging out. And I uh, will see you guys later. All right. Thanks. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. And I know, Gent, you're gonna have to go here pretty quick. Yeah. If we can just, I... if we can just really quickly mention this, you mentioned a bunch of structures for Erlu as the bonus. Dex yeah. is getting a little bigger. But what? What? This first one interests me the most, honestly, because it seems pretty stalemate-y. It's uh, it's it has been done uh, in uh, in Delt Fuse uh, anniversary one year and a half ago. Okay. And it was. Pretty fun. Um, the the thing, yes, it, it's actually pretty uh, pretty long and stalemate But uh, with RT, you can snipe down the MG, and the fox cannot do anything about it. So so RT is really the unit of choice here, uh, and otherwise you just kind of try to get more of the bases. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I'm excited for. Uh... For these rounds um this last one looks pretty interesting well as well but a lot of people if they do make it this far it'll be a while so um we we don't need to spend a whole lot of time trying to talk about something that isn't going to happen for another <laughs> month here so yeah yeah it's going to be pretty heroic you can't even get to to far um it might be actually even harder than the spring uh, open uh, i tried to to have um, a little bit of uh, even difficulty but I actually didn't realize uh, how strong those bosses were when I invited them because I wasn't really uh, paying attention to a ladder and stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk through all those. Um... Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me and showing you uh, Tatanka Meta. It was pretty, pretty cool and uh, insightful. So. Yeah. Thanks a lot, and and uh, hopefully um, um, uh, you, you'll do a, another two and tail talks in the next weeks. Yeah, it's yeah, always a, a, a pleasure to to watch. Um, see you. Awesome, thanks. Bye. Hopefully, we Bye. get you on here pretty soon as, again. Yeah. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. Take care, Jet. Always a pleasure to hear gentlemen's insights uh like you said such a legend absolutely absolutely so keep it's up to you and me to cover the uh the stuff here unfortunately we didn't get to the tier list with the uh the two of them here as well but um we're going to continue with it anyway uh, all right there's a couple of things i want to breeze through and then one or two things we can spend a bit of time on um just going to mention real quickly the dual championship we just casted earlier on this stream, it won't be in the YouTube video, but uh, early on this stream we casted some of the quarterfinals and a semifinals match there. So plugging along, we have two more quarterfinals matches to be played, um, and then three more semifinals, and we'll have a full grand final set up, and we're looking to have grand finals live casted for sure. Those will be best of sevens, which is a first for this tournament. Um, and we'll just we'll be narrowing everything down really to the the absolute cream of the crop. So hopefully those will be some really good games. Yeah, I mean uh, the the four teams that are left are all just insane. So I like I like to see uh, how Stat Leon can do, and hopefully they could uh, go all the way. I think that'd be really cool. And then all eyes are going to be on Premium Bow and Mishi versus Meek and Night Slayer. Oh man, an absolute battle of legends! I cannot wait for that one. Um, and then let's not forget Tatanka in the lower bracket as well. Um, I could see him just crushing through everything. Uh, he's in a couple of teams, so. 
Absolutely. All right. Um, so let's. We've got two things left that I want to cover here. Unit discussion, Discord. I know that you have. Um, Keeper, you found some things to mention from that to highlight. And then we've got our tier list. And I think that'll be about it. So we can take our time with these. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So not much popping off on the Discord, Tandor. Uh, it was a little quiet this week. We did have some chatter about snakes. Tiki Gray came out in unit discussion saying, I think snake HP buff will ruin game balance. And maybe that's a little hyperbolic. He says mass snakes will be OP insta snipe commander. And Haru, or Plube, actually came out and agreeing with Tiki. And later on, I believe the next day, Eel publicly said that he's removing the change to snake from the next patch. Oh, man. So, so they're going to keep their lower hit points and their days. Right, and he also, and this one I I didn't see much discussion on, but he also redacted the change to skunk. So skunks are gonna, you know, they're gonna have their HP, and snakes will have their days, and their HP will not increase. So what wh what do you think about these changes? And then I can I can tell you my thoughts. Sure. So um, the snakes getting a bu getting a health buff which was a fairly significant health buff and losing their days at the end of the day is a slight buff um, since days isn't a huge deal except against big tier three. So think of it as a slight tier three buff and a snake buff. And I don't think we need either of those. Uh, tier three is very strong in the meta and snakes we see constantly. Almost every game there are snakes. It's, a, it's not a, a weak unit. So I think it's fine. Um, to leave Snakes alone for right now and just see how the other changes impact the game first, especially since he's trying to get the patch out um, as quick as possible. So that's my thoughts on the Snake. I'm curious what yours are. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the Snake is um, is in an extremely powerful position right now, um, especially once you see how Tatanki uses Snakes and the fact that he will just tag every single tier two on your side of the map, you know? Yeah. He micros in the toads, and then his commander is already there to micro the snakes and just tag everything up. So it's just in, it's an insanely powerful unit, and I do think that the HP buff and loss of days probably would have equated to a buff for snake. Um, but that being said, I, I do like that we are sort of keeping uh, t tier threes at bay because yeah. I, I I like the game as it is now, and I think any indirect buff to a Tier 3 will just swing it that much further into a Tier 3-centric meta. Um, and, I, and I don't think I, that's good for the game. I, I don't think so either. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to say as you know about this pro uh, conversation, uh, Tandor, is that the game is incredibly balanced. I really do think the game is, is very well balanced and very well made. And while we talk about this week after week and while we go to unit discussion and we talk about how toads are OP and how lizards are OP, um, I really do think the game is in an incredible state right now. And I really uh, tip my hat to to Eel for putting in so much work over the years yeah. and uh, you know shaping the game as it is today. So I, I think bouncing off of that, I want to reiterate one of my kind of core ideas with unit balance, especially when you do have a game that is pretty well balanced as it is. Basically every unit has a viable use, and we see a variety of playstyles used all the time. Like we were just talking about how Meek and Tatanka are some of the best players with complete opposite styles. Um, Tatanka is able to make a, a couple of different styles work really strongly. He has more than one style, uh, even though there's some overlap in f flavor. And Meek, on the other hand, can do just about anything and win really uh, against really strong opponents with it. So if that's not evidence of good balance in the game right now, I don't know what is. Like, there are no units that you have to have every game, except either squirrels or lizards, which I think is intended. Um... So I, yeah. I just want to echo that sentiment and say that all of these balances are slight improvement and slight uh, improvement to enjoyment 
more than anything else because the game is balanced. I, um, I yeah, I always I 100% agree, and it's just it's just something that's good to bring up because you know we we always talk about balance and change this and change that, but at the outset, like the game is incredibly well balanced as is. So yeah, uh, these little minor changes uh, will just make our quality of life, I guess, like you said, just uh, inches uh, better. And then. Uh, what do you think about the reversal on the skunk change, keeping the HP and not nerfing it? Sure. So um, I guess the flip side of what I was thinking is we got to be careful not to make too many changes because you could throw it back out of balance. So my approach is always supporting very small changes. Like the skunk change was such a small change. From 30 to 28 hit points is a very slight change. I'm fine with it not happening I, I think it is a good change because skunks are so powerful and basically the best tier two in certain parts of the game right now they're very dominant in a way that kind of edges out or kind of elbows out the cam from that early game position so i liked the idea but again it's such a small change and it's not like skunks are overpowered right now uh, i don't mind him cutting it and waiting to see what the other impacts are yeah, I, I um, I'm okay either way, but I definitely would have preferred the change. Yeah. Uh, just because I, I do think that the skunk is um, you know, like like the Taurus was saying last week, it's it's basically played in every single game of Tooth and Tail. It's not yeah. like a falcon. It's not like a chameleon. Um, the snake is getting very popular in today's meta, but but otherwise the skunk is um often a linchpin in, in one's army especially when they're dealing with tier one so yeah and, uh, and snakes becoming popular isn't replacing skunk it's adding to it so right exactly uh, so i i agree i think skunks could use a little bit of a drop um but it's a small change and you know i'm fine with seeing what the changes we have are going to do first and then going back to a slight nerf to the skunk because i think it does need it but you know Small changes and fewer changes is probably a good idea considering how great we have it as it is. So um, I'm curious to see how the toads are going to do. Um, Tatanka is saying a slight toad nerf might be warranted. I agree. I think a slight skunk nerf is also warranted, but we'll see maybe next patch for that one. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, toads and lizards are all anyone talks about on the Tooth and Tail Discord. <laughs> so oh yeah uh it's and it's actually really interesting because you have a one camp of people that say toads are op and you have another camp of people that say lizards are op and um it, you know what it's that just, means it what? means it, it means they're well balanced against each other and they're both strong in the right hands yeah i i think that's definitely true so um so yeah, it's it, uh, it's interesting just to see the community split on that issue. I always find it funny when people are arguing toads and lizards. Uh, then I have one more uh, thing that I pulled, and Trumpet made a comment in unit discussion Discord about barbed wire, um, and I sort of agree with him. I think barbed wire is problematic. He said uh, barbed wire is stupid. It basically lets you skip the early game, and it's really just overall very boring. Um, is the nerf to barbed wire going far enough and, and barbed wire is tricky because it's it's been changing patch after patch after patch tweak here tweak there it, it went from being useless to being overpowered um it, it's sort of niche but in what it does it does very well so that's my question for you tandor okay i have is is the nerf to barbed wire going far enough i have one answer and i'm going to approach it two ways and it's going to be the same answer both times first of all i think the the nerf is relatively significant um specifically when taking direct damage the wire dies twice as quick and um it, does it build slower what was the other half of that or is that it i think it i think all it is is it um it's more vulnerable while it's building, but that's otherwise right, it's right. the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when taking direct damage, it dies twice as quick. Obviously, when it's building, it's going to take direct damage from anything. Um, but even once it's built, if a ferret ball hits it by mistake, for example, it'll die twice as quick, or or uh, from AOE and stuff like that. So basically, it's harder to get up safely. That is a relatively significant nerf, I think. You have to be a lot more careful when doing it. You can't just throw it down with as much impunity. 
while not adjusting how powerful it can be once it is up. Um, and so I think it's going to be enough that it, it makes wire... It, wire is still strong once it's up, but it gives some more ability to counterplay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, if, I, if you're facing yeah. it, if you let it get up, it's going to be every bit as scary as before. And not unbalancingly so necessarily, but everybody's scary as before, but it actually gives you a way of shutting it down. Hey, I, I hope it's I hope it's enough, Tandor. I do. Um, it just seems like, and I see uh, Fleur Delays and Tatanka in the chat talking about, you know, and this is what people talk about when it comes to barbed wire. Oh, just get chameleons. Oh, just get pigeons. Oh, just get moles. No one plays with those units in a standard composition. <laughs> well, and that's not, what... that's not the yeah. fact of the wire. I think, you know, moles are getting a slight buff and cams might be getting a slight indirect buff, although less now that skunks. But as cams and moles get uh, put back into the meta a little bit, I think that ends up being a good counter to wire. Um, but as of right now, you're right. People don't play with them as much. Yeah. And, and now, once again, you know, the snake changes off the table as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so... cams are still hidden cams are still going to be in a tough spot um we'll see i i i hope the the um the nerf is uh is effective and i do hope we see less barbed wire because some of these like triple tier three one base barbed wire plays are just uh crazy man well and, and the other way i want to approach it to the same answer that yes i think it's going to be enough um is it's just going back to the, my philosophy of taking it slow, one thing at a time. I would rather take a situation like we have now and give the, the wire not enough of a nerf and then be, later be able to nerf it a little bit again than go too much and have to back up. Like, I'd rather not have the pendulum swing and instead let's just give it a little nerf and it, you know what? If it's not enough, we'll just give it another little one later. I agree. I so, agree. That, so. that, that logic is sound. So I'm, I'm excited to see whether it's enough. And if not, we'll see another one. If it is, then we're happy. Very true. Well said. Um, I, That's it for me for unit discussion. We'll, uh, we'll have to see if it's more active next time around. I think once Should the we, patch go live, yeah. it, once, sorry, once the patch goes live, it's going to be um, pretty, pretty hot, I think. I, I hope so. I hope that uh, that the game is active and that you know it sort of revitalizes the player base. And we've already seen a revitalization of the player base. I mean, if you just look at the number of uh, games that are be playing on ladder uh, for the past three weeks versus you know you know six weeks before, it's almost doubled. So well, I think that's even, because uh, summer, right? Out of school so because of summer, and and everyone's hanging out in Discord too. So it, hey, man, it's a good time to uh, to be in Tooth and Tail. Mm -hmm. And it's a good time to get started uh, in Tooth and Tail as well. The only time I can think that is a better time to start Tooth and Tail is Clan Wars. But, uh, you know, Clan Wars was just perfect for beginners. But besides that, now is the time. Um, so if anyone yeah, sees absolutely. this on the YouTube or something and is not a currently Tooth and Tail player, but you are intrigued or you want to check it out, absolutely get on the Discord, you know, find some folks, or just get on the ladder and play the game. It's It's a great time. So let's do the last thing today. We've got the tier list. I've got it pulled up here from last time. This is where we left off. I believe the owls were moved and the turret was moved from before. Um, and if this is the last TNT talks before the patch, or one of the last, I think it is our goal to enshrine the current meta in this <laughs> list. So the game is we each make one change. Um, you go ahead and go first if you'd like to uh, chat about something or, or yes i i have a few in mind but i think i want to move falcon down to a part of me falcon falcon or, or balloon um let's let's move let's move balloon down to b tier i feel i think that that's reasonable and i think that that's appropriate um i, I don't see it used as often it really is um sort of more niche in that uh your strategy i feel has to be uh either siege um 
you know you know it's just you don't see it as much in 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 the games with high level players and i don't think it's as effective or as well rounded of some of the options that you have on the table what do you think tandor is that, am i making a mistake here um so i've played this game almost exclusively in the current patch when i first started playing this game back around clan wars i saw balloon a lot and now I see it almost never um, in 1v1s. So I think it's kind of moved out of the meta without a nerf, honestly. Um, and we've yeah. got a, a couple people in the chat that I'm interested in their inputs as well. So yeah, guys, go ahead. I'll just read them aloud so that YouTube knows what's going on. But that makes a lot of sense to me. They're, they're really seeing a lot less now because people have figured out how to work around them. Um, and the meta has kind of moved on. Again, without a nerf or anything, which is really exciting to me, that the meta can continue to shift so dramatically without any changes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think about a balloon, and it's like, when, when is a balloon strongest? And it's typically in tandem with some other grand overarching strategy. Like, a balloon is great if you have a ferret siege. A balloon is great if you have a kasha running around the map. A balloon is great for any siege strategy. Mm -hmm. But when we... When we make the tier list, we have to think about, you know, what is the best in every situation for every strategy. Um, so I, I, blue is just a little too niche in terms of what the map is giving you, right? Yeah. And what your strategy is going into the game. Like, so it, it seems doesn't like, mean... Right. So, so it seems like it's more map dependent and also a very strong support unit to a style, not the carrier itself. Um, 100%. It, it seems like the balloon can be very powerful if you get a lot of them up, but lately nobody's being able to get that many of them up. I think that was the change is earlier folks were able to just get mass balloon up more easily. And now it's, it's uh, everyone's figuring out how to shut it down. Um, Absolutely. So I'll buy that. I like it. We've got in the chat uh, to tank is saying he was going to lower the balloon to B as well. He's saying snakes are S tier because they're versatile and powerful. Let's see, what would my change be here? Certainly the way that you play Tatanka. <laughs> but there but there are a lot of there are a lot of great players that don't rely on snake. I mean gentlemen, we had him on the show earlier. It'd be cool if he was still here because he is one that is notoriously a uh, skunk falcon player, often leaving off the snake and not having another tier tier two, so Yeah. yeah. I, I think um, snakes are extremely powerful, but I don't know if I'd quite say S tier yet. Um, I'm definitely sticking with squirrels and skunks in S tier for sure. The, the two I'm looking at are toads and lizards. Like you were saying, they're, it's kind of split, so I don't really think it's fair for me to put my own opinion of toads being stronger right now into this if I'm trying to think of it as a, a general snapshot. <laughs> like a man is saying he liked snakes before they were cool. Um, so I don't know if I, I would consider maybe moving toads down or, or uh, lizards up. Alternatively, I think, I don't know. I think toads are just, are just better, honestly, because lizards are more map dependent. Toads you could use anywhere. Um, maybe I'm just biased because I see lizards use so much in 2v2s, and I've got to remember this is a 1v1. Uh, uh, yes, uh, 2v2s, they're S plus tier, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. They're, they're... <laughs> so many games are just one off lizards alone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. I mean, we could take a hint from Tatanka, right? Yeah. He so... hasn't used lizards, and, and he's the best player. I think he's got something like, what do we say, 61 wins and 13 losses this week? That's true. Yeah, that's true. The Squirrel Toad player that is currently according to almost every chart, the best in the world. Doesn't use lizards all that much. Is, uh, Tatanka, do you use lizards ever? Or just almost never? Like, is it actually never? <laughs> well, I, I also, I'd like to just add on to that question. Do you use lizards competitively? Because I know right, when yeah, you yeah, play, that's... right, like unranked games, I see you use lizards. You run the gen deck with the triple defense, but like, if you're in a competitive environment, would you ever consider running lizards in this meta? That is a much better question. Thank you. Um, I'd be... I'd think about moving Badger up to B as well. That's one I could see. 
Um, cause Badger is not strong right now, but it's not as bad or as rarely used as ferrets or arty. Tatanka says, yes. Can you clarify? Sometimes. In fact, I'm talking myself into it. Talk me out of it, Kipo. I'm putting Badgers up to B tier. Are we stacking I... B tier too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I don't necessarily disagree with it. Like like maybe not badger isn't as good as a wolf, but it's certainly better than a ferret and an artillery, I think. Yeah. Um it, it's certainly less niche than a ferret. So I, I I don't I don't know that I see ferret and badger on the same level. Yeah. That's true. They have pretty uh, different so roles I, so too. I, I can't. I can't necessarily talk you out of it, unless you want to move ferret down or something. I don't know. I like it. No, I don't, I don't want to move ferrets down because ferrets are definitely have their strong uses in a way that moles don't. Um, and you know, I'm hoping. I, I'm not attached to putting something in every tier. I would be proud to pull moles out of there if they get a buff and just leave the deer tier empty and just let that be another round of compliments to eel. As it is, you know, there's no F tier. I, I left one out completely because there is no F tier unit. Um, right. The game is in a pretty dang balanced state, and maybe the fact that most of the units are in A and B right now, and I don't see mass uh, complaints about it. I see a couple of people saying lizards should go up or snakes should go up or, or you know, a little shift here and there, but by and large, everything is pretty middle of the road. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean... <laughs> This is a hard exercise that that uh, you have a stew to endure. These these little changes in tier lists are are not easy. Yeah, well, I I like that. I I welcome the challenge. And uh, next time, if we have to, we'll put this earlier to get a couple more in uh, inputs on it. At least the Taros, if not another guest. Um, and then when the when the patch drops, we're gonna have a couple of weeks to shift everything to where we think it ought to be next. So I'm excited for That's that. That's true. Absolutely. And hopefully it's coming soon. Uh, I believe Eel said pretty recently that it should be coming this week. So I imagine, uh, I don't know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But of course, uh, it could be delayed further. There's no hard deadline on that. Yep, yep. I have a quote today from Eel uh, saying patch this week. So it, we have it from him that his intention is this week. Um, so I think Thursday seems like a pretty good guess. And we'll... If it's not this week, it'll be pretty soon hereafter. Well, I think that does it, folks. That's the uh, that's it for our show. I will be putting this up on the tube. Otherwise, thank you for being here, Kipo, and, and sticking around. And uh, are you going to start the King of the Hill right away or give it a 20-minute break here? I'm going to give it 20 minutes. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me, Tandor. I had a lot of fun uh, hanging out and talking about Tooth and Tail. Awesome. All right. And thank you to the chat and all of those here uh, watching and cheering us on. So we will see you later. Thank you. Take care.